Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Muscle and this is another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast. And tonight we have a bona fide superstar in the building. We're talking about this gentleman's been in movies like The Lunatic, Dance Hall Queen, Third World Cop, Shatas, Home Again, Out the Gate, and so much, so much, so much more. You know who we have in the building? We have Mr. Paul Campbell in the building tonight. What's going on, big boss? I'm just very happy to be here. Thank yes. you for having me, my brother. Thank you for coming through, you know what I mean? We see you on the big screens and all of these stuff there, but now I actually get a chance to speak to you outside of the bad man role. Oh, thank <laughs> God for that, eh? <laughs> yeah, because sometimes I tell you, you know, uh, people, some are play bad too good. Yeah. You know, yeah. And they have a tendency of thinking that's who you are. Yeah. You know, uh, it, uh, people have been offered guns on the street, you know. Road boy, this is for you, you know. And uh, my arsenal's full. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> We're moving on, but uh, it's all good. You yeah. Know? And, and uh, they're just trying to say to you, uh, we love your work. Yeah. And I appreciate it. Yeah. 100%. Because I guess if they didn't approach you like that, that means you're not doing your job. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So when I I'm get... hated as a villain, I go, all right. But yeah. these days I'm loved. The yeah. ladies, so <laughs> they love the bad boy. Yeah. Hey. So it's good. What are you going to yeah. do, right? Yeah, what can I do? Exactly. Huh? All right. So let's go to the beginning here. If you're to describe Paul Campbell in 30 seconds, cool. go ahead and describe who Paul Campbell is. In 30? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. That can never happen. Not in 30, but um, I'll make a go of it. Okay. Uh, I'm an artist. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a dad. Yeah. I love being true to me. I love animals. Okay. And uh, I truly love art. Yes. I mean, whatever form, mm -hmm. whether, whether it's the celluloid art, whether it's painting, uh, fine art, all of that. That's yeah, true. I'm, I, I think I am truly an artist. Yeah. yeah. That's that's good. And let me ask you, so then let's go way back then. When did you discover you were an artist? Was it as a kid, as an adult? When did you discover that you had this thing in your heart that you wanted to show the world? Uh, well, earlier on, uh, on the periphery, uh, as a child, when I started telling blatant lies, you know, <laughs> so I didn't have to go to school, you know. Yeah. I said, damn, I'm good, you know. <laughs> my, uh, my belly, uh, you know, the pain and yeah. the, you know, so I said, yeah, my mom believed, you know yeah. what I mean? And then mm. when I, were, I had run out of all of the excuses, you yeah. know, and I laid there that morning, didn't want to go to school because I was being bullied. Okay. Yeah, for that one, but I didn't want to go. So I was thinking up, hey, how do I not go? Yeah. So I had a brilliant idea, and I screamed out my mother's name, you know. Mama! She runs to the room. I said, Mama? Yeah. And I'm staring off into the distance. Mama, <laughs> I can't see you. Where? Mama? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I went blind, eh? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm in the taxi, long story short, going to the doctor, my mother is crying and all of that, can't believe what's going on, yeah. you know? And then I'm thinking, how do I tell my mother that <laughs> I was just joking? <laughs> she's going to kill me. Yeah. That's a mom. And that was the last coherent uh, thing that came out of the mouth. <laughs> you understand? Because <laughs> after that... Yeah, so it taught me a lesson too, you know. I mean, yeah. you know, those closest to you, you never want to hurt. So, yeah. you know, yeah. But it's been since then, mm -hmm. you know. And then um, then I went into it officially. Uh, they had something called the National Pantomime. Yes, I've heard of that one. Yeah, yeah. you know. And it gave, what it does, it gives, uh, it's a showcase where they have different shows, uh, musicals. Okay. Every um, annually. And it gives uh, local people an opportunity to, you know, mm -hmm. show their worth. Yeah. And, of course, I waited for the auditions. It was printed in the local paper, went down, did my thing, and I got in. Okay. And after that, boy, I mean, you know, mom was a word. I was always, my mother nurtured my 
passions. Okay. You know, uh, at the time when everybody would say, yo, I mean, the doctor, lawyer, Indian chief. Yes, he says, yes. no, he wants to be the actor. He wants to be well, whatever he want to be. Let him be just that. Yeah. You know, so there was that kind of support which sort of fueled. And something like that, especially coming from a West Indian background. Yeah, man. That's really My not mother was the a case. Radical. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Because most times I've never really heard of a parent. Because again, as you said, mm-hmm. doctor, lawyer, accountant. It was always that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I say yeah. I want to be an actor, even though they're rushing home to go home and watch it. Over, they're watching on TV. Mm-hmm. But my my thoughts at the time, even as a young thespian, was. Um, to be the thespian, yeah. you know, to be the only guy in the frame mm-hmm. that you'd be looking at, mm-hmm. even though it was crowded, you know. I <laughs> yeah. mean, there had to be something different. There had to be something that you will remember about yeah. this particular guy. I suspect that is one of the reasons I became, I chose not to be the comedic guy, which was at the time a lot of that yeah. coming out of the Caribbean and, you know, like it's a joking matter. It's yeah. not all a laughing yeah. matter, you know. So there's got to be somebody to tell those kind of stories, mm-hmm. you know. So I chose that, you know, and I uh, thought it would be so much more believable mm-hmm. if it were uh, uh, relayed intensely. Yeah. Intense is definitely what you do. (laughs) Intense is your way of thinking. And what were some, so you say the pantomime. What was the pantomime that you were actually in your early ones? I did uh, one called Johnny Reggae, where where I played, uh, there were three members of the Mouthwater Quartet. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And uh, while the other people were doing the move to the left, I was doing it to the right. right. I wasn't directed to do that, but (laughs) that I thought, you know, so people laughed and, you know, uh, I thought, wow, okay, Mm -hmm. that's what it is, eh? And uh, from there on, that, uh, could not only suffice, I needed to know what the theoretical side of the stuff was, you know. Yeah. What do I mean by upstage, downstage? Well, if you cast a shadow, find your light. How do you do that? I mean, I hear these guys talk some wee and them trill some girls, yeah. you know. They don't have to spend a dollar. Yeah. But if they <laughs> open their mouths and say, my darling, I must have you know. Yeah. I've been watching you for the longest of times. You know, and I'm like, <laughs> wow. <Okay. laughs> you know, Works for so me. It was that, you know. Yeah. So well, from a narcissistic point, standpoint, but yeah. it's cool. Yeah. You know, it fueled the passion. And um, I went to the, at the time it was called the Cultural Training Center Okay. in Jamaica. Um, it is now called the Edna Manley School for the Visual and Performing Arts. Okay. Yeah, man. And so... Try to get that foundation because you you have to, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, there are a lot of folks who are born with it, which is commendable. Yeah. But I, I, I think it's always good from a root up. You got to, sometimes you got to work on it, nurture it, and understand the technical mm-hmm. of what you're doing. Yeah, man. And a lot of people don't really get that. So again, so it wasn't just you. You had the idea that mm-hmm. you wanted to be an actor. So then mm-hmm. now you had to follow through with it. And also, put it in work. also yeah, the, the contributing factors. Um, where I lived at the time as a kid uh, was what I'm called, the depressed areas okay. of Kingston. I lived in Maxfield Avenue. That's where you originate from. Yeah. Garrison. No, well, no, no, originate. I originated from Raytown originally, okay. from one garrison yeah. to the next. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. you know, so you woke up with this very textured life. And whether you liked it or not, somehow you were weaved into it. Unless you took a really mm-hmm. firm stance and say, which I did. Yeah. And I document that in a one-man show that I have. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I give the man back him thing and say, listen, yeah. I want to be an actor. Yeah. And say, actor? <laughs> yeah, I make money from being a actor. You idiot. All this. <laughs> uh, yeah. That, yeah, so that's how, it, you know, but you, when you, your passion is, you know, fervent, you know, your whole yeah. firm and get your stuff done. Okay, so then the school you went to, how long did you actually attend acting school, we'll call it? 
No, it's a school of drama. Yeah. At the time, it's a school of drama. But it, it, it was very tight at times because uh, when I got into the school of drama, I was still living in the war ravaged um, area, yeah. Maxfield Avenue, you know, and I chose at the very end of the semester to um, not go back home. I started living in the bathroom of the school. What? Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. that serious? It was that serious for many reasons. You wanted to elevate yourself. You mm -hmm. wanted to get to another place because now you were at a school where you're mixing with 10 million different people and seeing different cultures and different lifestyles. Yeah. You know, and why should you go back down there where the guns are barking and you mm -hmm. can't sleep and that kind of vibe? So that school uh, acting to me was everything. Got you. You know, so uh, there was a night after um, a great production had mm -hmm. ended and, you know, the accolades and everybody drove off and that was it. The last bus had gone. Okay. And there was no getting home. So yeah. <laughs> you, one had to improvise. And uh, from that quick improvisation that night, mm -hmm. you know, and then that's it. But don't cry for me, Argentina. In that bathroom, <laughs> there were four other people. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. Not really okay, but yeah. had to do it to yeah, get on. That's they, we all graduated. Mm -hmm. They are part of the story. I got you. Wow. Yeah, man. And from there, where did, what was your first breakout role then that really got you started on the path? Breakout film-wise, um, I, I funnily, after all of that drama, bathroom and all of that and leaving and deciding, well, listen, I, just when folks get to Jamaica, the the dollar gets smaller, you know, and uh, I better go where it originates, you know. Or the roles you get are not uh, what you want, the principal roles. Uh, so you've got to go where it all starts. So okay. I opted to, uh, if I wanted to be the actor, it never would have happened just sitting there, you know. And my mother, God bless her soul, she's always saying, the world is your oyster, Paul. Go look for it. Yeah, go for the atlas. This mm -hmm. is us here, a speck. And you see all of that? Yeah. You go, boy. Mm. You know, so it's that kind of, you know, backing and support system that has always been in place, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, fuels, you know, the wind beneath the wings. That's that's big right there, especially because I could tell the support is what really pushed you to the top of your game. Yeah, you man. got the and support you and you had to. the passion. Mm -hmm. And so you always that combined. Yeah. yeah. And another thing, when you're away from home, there is another little thing. I don't know. I'm, many, I'm sure other Jamaicans will tell you. Uh, mm -hmm. People who are in a business or being a doctor elsewhere, but in the diaspora, yeah. um, they'll tell you, you know, people... Man, it's just so crazy yeah. what people think you're, you you go through and you, yeah, but it's rough and mm -hmm. it's tough and you, you put your all into it, you know, mm -hmm. and, but that's what it is, man. It's my passion has always been mm -hmm. and uh, what it is more than ever mm -hmm. now for me right is now. to passing it on, you know, teaching, which I do in s some summers, yeah, you know, but uh, passing it on is all. Okay, so then I guess you said you had to leave Jamaica to get your first breakout role. I went away to find it, Yeah, and nothing happened after X amount of years. I did London, I was in London. Years. Yeah, I did Lugano, I, I, did, um, I diverted and did other little odd jobs. Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 Lucerne, mm -hmm. um, Geneva, um, London, and then decided to uh, <clears throat> come back to Jamaica, did come back to Jamaica, and I was the entertainment manager of an amusement park called uh, Coney Park. I didn't know that. Yes, <laughs> now I mean, you gotta juggle, you know? <laughs> and um, one day uh, my phone rang and they asked, would you like to try out for a part? I said, mm. Say, yeah, there's a film here in Jamaica, they're uh, screen testing called The Lunatic, are you interested? I said, yeah, why not? Yeah. So I <clears throat> went and um, did my thing, um, went, came away, waited for a call, which I did get. Yeah. Went back, um, 
worked again and got the role. So, the yeah. and I decided yeah. there and then, yeah, what? Yeah. Yeah. And that was a an American production in Jamaica, or that was a Jamaican production with some Americans in it as well? No, this was an English production. This was um, uh, produced by uh, Chris Blackwell. Um, yes. I think Island the company Records? was called Island a company at the time, uh, yeah, at the time, but uh, all that is um, very different now. Okay. I think the setup is called Palm Pictures these days. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. But at yes. the time, it was uh, Island, and I think Island sold over to Polydor or some whatever. But um, <clears throat> that's how it was, and that's how I got the the, the first well mm-hmm. taste of the celluloid. Yeah. The lunatic, and that movie turned out to be a smash hit. It did, mm-hmm. it did. Uh, certainly for me, yeah, one hundred percent. You know, uh, because I really, I, I thought at the time, listen, here's the opportunity that you've been waiting for for the longest of times. Mm-hmm. And um, when I got the role, I quit the job. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, listen, I don't care what's going on. Yeah. If the phone rings and they say, hey, mm-hmm. action. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, I'm out. You know? So <laughs> yeah. I quit the job and I am a method actor. So that's one question. Continue. I, I'm going to ask you. Or, or you know what? Explain to me exactly what a method actor is. I've heard you said that several times, but I'm not really versed to understand what that means. All right. A method actor is when I got the role of the lunatic. Mm -hmm. I parked my car at my sister's house. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know Jamaica any at all? Yeah. All right. Well, at the time I lived in Kingston. Okay. Uh, They were shooting in um, St. Anne's Bay. Okay. That's on the other side. That's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, when I left my thing at my sister's house, I took my shoes off. Uh, this was a guy who did his money and pity every two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so I took a, ooh, hold on. <laughs> took my shoes off. Yeah. You know, there was a pair of old trousers on the my sister's uh, fold cobble in the mm-hmm. back. I cut it short, put them on. And uh, put on an old raggedy shirt mm-hmm. and walked from Kingston to St. Anne's Bay. It took me a couple of days, but what? Yeah, because what that did for me, it started, it made me become the character. Um, I stopped using my right hand and started using the left because it changes my posture. Yeah. I'm very detailed when it comes to what they call metamorphosizing, becoming something becoming, else. yep. Yes. So all of these little details help the method actor to become this new person, Yeah, you know. So I did that. I lived wild, uh, went to the bush. I, I helped the fishermen. I never spoke a word. Mm-hmm. I helped the fishermen pull the fish in early in the morning. They threw rotten fish at me. I took it. I boiled it. I fried. I roasted it. I ate it. Yeah. I walked up into the hills of St. Anne's. I ate the fruits. I walked the streets day and night. Okay. I had crab louse in my crotch, grass slice under my armpits, and I started living really rough. Yeah. I uh, My... Ultimate test was I presented myself to the people of Bamboo and I started living among them Mm -hmm. as their original (laughs) madman. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so if I'm with these folks and hello, and they show me a couple of oranges and I just sit there in my quiet Mm -hmm. and I peel them and I eat them, you know, and I do what I want pretty much now and I'm a regular. Mm -hmm among them. And so one day the uh, big trucks with the lights roll up the hill mm-hmm. and the white man come over to talk to the mud man. Imagine he <laughs> sees everybody else there, right? Yeah. And he chooses to come talk to the mud man. And not only that, mm-hmm. he wants the mud man to be a part of his movie. <laughs> <laughs> so the people started laughing. You know? <laughs> because because they've never yeah. seen you anywhere. You just showed up one day, yeah. and they really think that this yeah. is who you are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which is great. You know, I mean, after the film, however, I, there was a woman I worked 
I, I did menial work for because I had to survive. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I remember walking past their place and she was chopping some leaves, uh, mm-hmm. some branches that were hanging. I said, let me do that for you, mom. Mm-hmm. And I took the machete, she locked her door, gave me the machete. Mm-hmm. I did all of that. And she said, come on back, I'll give you something to eat. I mm-hmm. go to the back, I got something to eat. I, I squatted, yeah. ate it with my fingers like the guy on the street would normally. You're living, you know. And uh, there are no ears when you're there, <laughs> you know. So wow. that was how it was. So. so it was, I guess, it's really with a method actor, it's not really just recognizing your lines or memorizing your lines. It's also the nuances that really Every brings a character thing. to life. Every little thing. I, I tell you, I did a film called um, Dance Hall Queen. We're getting there. Huh? All right. <laughs> but, now, in that film, I tell you about little things. Mm-hmm. I tighten my jaw bones as the character. It yeah. changes his whole persona. It mm-hmm. makes, when you see that guy, it appears as if there's Priest. some some wicked stuff going on internally because mm-hmm. he keeps tightening, yeah. you, you know. So it, it speaks a language. It tells mm-hmm. you something, yeah. you know. So these are the details as a, a method actor mm-hmm. that, uh, that I sort of uh, put together as a collage to paint any particular character. Makes sense. And what was your favorite scene in The Lunatic? Something what was my that, favorite scene? Yeah, something that you remember to this day. I remember all the names. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'll never forget them because um, Aloysius. that was a difference in getting the part. There mm-hmm. were a couple of scenes for the people to, to uh, who attended the audition. Mm-hmm. Um, and most people went for the much easier scene that didn't have the 27 names yeah. that this guy had, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I tell you something about music. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the greatest thing in that if you, it doesn't matter what it is, if you put a melody to it, you'll pick it up half in half the time. That's true. And so that's what I did uh, in recording or retaining rather the names. Mm-hmm. And so it stuck can never go it's there yeah. forever you know wow <laughs> yeah and the scene with the tree at the very end of, of the course. movie iconic scene yeah yeah. I, I, yeah when he says i gotta go and he hugs the tree yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but he takes you into his world which yeah. was such a brilliant writing by anthony winkler okay. you know rest his soul you okay. know but um and I, I thought it was just a, a wonderful film, a wonderful project to be a part of. Yeah. And when your friends, families, and peers seen you in that role, they seen the movie, what did they say to you after that? Or how did you even feel seeing the completed project on the big screen or at home or wherever you've seen it? Um, well, initially it wasn't very, um, it wasn't, Sweet. It wasn't great uh, because uh, two weeks before my mother had died, you know. So your biggest supporter. Yeah. Yes. Ah, yes. 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 I got so you. yeah, man. And so I sat there in the dark room and uh, with an empty chair next mm-hmm. to me, and then my girlfriend in the other chair. Okay. Yeah, man. She often knows her mama. Really? Daddy. You so, left the chair for her. Yeah, so, and that's what happened. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it never really, I never went with that kind of feeling at all. It was a very different, you know, yeah. I, I was just saying, hey, see, you know, mm-hmm. this is what I've been saying all these years. It's here, you know. So, that, that was that moment. Um, but as time went on, you know, um, uh, I, I, I like, Watching other people work, the lady I worked with, the woman, um, Julie, yes. Julie Wallace. Okay. Yeah, Inga. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. she was brilliant, you know, as an actor. So, you know, it was so easy to get along with. Yeah. Because I guess as an actor, you feed off of each other's energy. That, that's a key word, feed, mm-hmm. you know, because when you both start believing the moment, as sugar, man. Yeah, sugar, when you both start believing mm-hmm. that moment. Yeah, mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah it, it just moves so easily. And uh, some of the stuff that I do on camera mm-hmm. happens, like they say there's another term used in the business, magic happens on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so lots of magic happened uh, on, on that set. 
you know, and I was very uh, lucky to have Lal Krem, the yeah. director. Okay. Yeah, from Guardian Krem. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, uh, his forte really is to shoot uh, car commercials, and I yeah. think he was making his debut as a film director. Yeah. And uh, it was easy for me. He said, Here, Paul, mm. if you fail it, mate, just do it. All right. If we don't like it, we throw it out. Just like that. Yeah, but he's never thrown it out. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That too is good. <laughs> So, you know, it builds me as the actor and uh, I start believing because my thing is I give all of my characters backstories. That's what you like to read, to bring them to life. To bring them to life. Yeah, man, because um, a guy in Dance Hall Queen, he has no parents, man. His mother was a crackhead. You know, you build all of these things and then you start believing it. So when you start walking and you move and you breathe and yeah. yeah. You're into it. Yeah. You live it. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And that's really what method acting is living the character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, 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 but um, I, I, in the, 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 the part of dance hall queen where I grab the kid by his throat yeah. and open the knife for yeah. the teeth. Mm-hmm. I saw that happening when I was 14 sitting on a wall. Okay. You know, and they talk about life imitating art and mm-hmm. vice versa. That's what it was. It was yeah. very traumatic at the time. Mm-hmm. But uh, many years later, I remembered how it made me feel when this guy, because he ran across the street, so mm-hmm. he was breathing heavy, uh, yeah. and there was some s- saliva stuff coming, say, your blood clot, yo. mm-hmm. and he grabs the kid, mm-hmm. and he pushes him up against the zinc, yeah. you know. He takes out his knife, with his, and I thought, Animal. Yeah. 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 And they call animals wild, huh? Mm-hmm. And yeah. The fact, that, <laughs> yeah. the fact that you retained that in your memory for so many years. No, and you it, found was, a it was printed. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It was shocking because I've never, I saw the guy's teeth from through his face. The guy stabbed him in his face and slid the knife mm-hmm. down to the side of his mouth, yeah. opening his face. So yeah. it was like, Yo, yeah. you see that? I, I was saying to my friend, you see that? I'm yeah. saying, mm-hmm. Printed yeah, forever so, in your yeah, mind. So it, 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 it's, it's stuff that, 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 you see, again, it helps with the craft of acting because it's the authenticity. And that's that what you're really, always looking yeah, for. Yeah, brings the conviction home, you know? Yeah. I mean, you're like, damn, this nigga is yeah. mad or bad. What? I mean, me, I can't hurt a fly. <laughs> can't hurt a fly, we're, you we're, know. We're, we're convinced you can. I don't know how you could convince us that you can't, but we're all convinced that you can. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a teeny weeny yeah. fly. Yeah. That's a small one. Okay, so then let's get to your next iconic. So then it was Lunatic and did. After that was Third World Cup or Dance Hall Queen? Third World Cup. After after Lunatic was Dance Hall Queen, then Third World Cup. After Lunatic was Dance Hall Queen with mm. Priest, mm. and then Dance Hall Cup with Capone. Dance Hall Queen. I mean, yeah. I mean Third World Cup Third with World Capone, Cup. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I got that mix up there. So Okay, yeah. so then let's get into Third World Cup. You played a totally different person than you played in The Lunatic. Completely different. This is where oh. we've seen that edgy Paul come out. Mm. The Badman Pa come on, but you were still on the right side of the law. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then let's get into Dirty that. Dirty police. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> cup one. A cup one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, there's a story again of the uh, depressed area you're living in. Mm-hmm. And uh, fortunately for me, I have a story that I know of. I mean, true thing, I uh, watched this guy uh, was beaten up. Okay. And cut in his face, and he says, Oh, man, yeah. Watch me, you. Yeah, I'm going to deal those. with your kids. And then many months after, mm-hmm. a year or so, I think it was about 14 months, this kid comes back in a police uniform in the back of a Jeep. Okay. Yeah. And he says, Yo, yo, now I'm off. <laughs> yeah. You understand? And then all of his police friends and sick with their big guns, of course. Everybody yeah. hands up. It's checking everybody. Guy comes over, he touches the guy, says, Blood 
Claire, the boy have gone. And he steps back. Yeah. And it's on. So, you know, I, you, you, life again imitating art. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's, it's, uh, this is why sometimes I, I never, I never really curse the upbringing mm-hmm. because it enriches somewhat, you know. I mean, you've got to move from it for a while, yeah. you know, but uh, yeah, man. That was it. There. So there was a lot of applying a lot of lessons from there. Mm-hmm. You know? What was it you liked about playing Capone? Because that was totally different than what we've seen in Lunatic. What was it that you really enjoyed about playing Capone? I like the story, the storyline of childhood friends and um, things are rough and mm-hmm. one finding an alternative other than, you know, doubling under and saying, all right, man, I'm going to wear the monster mask. Yeah. You know, you know, he chose not to. Mm-hmm. It's a great story, mm-hmm. you know. Very much. <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> Very much. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I, I love that idea of it. You know, and uh, between man and man, according mm-hmm. to Jamaicans, you know, between man and man. Mm-hmm. So it was very uplifting. Uh, sorry, Ratty had to make that choice, but ah, hey, yeah. that's what it boils down to. So like it. Yeah, the story really, yeah, it went yeah. home. Yeah. And you, you could see it because it was real. You know, there's a million people yes. that went through the exact same situation. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. When I, I say art imitating life. And yeah. if you're fortunate enough to have lived something that mm-hmm. you now have to apply mm-hmm. to your character, you know. It's a win-win. Sweet. Yeah. It's a win-win. Yeah. So then let's get to your one that you brought up a couple of times, which was Dance Hall Queen. Mm-hmm. All right. With Priest. Mm-hmm. How did you get into no, that? He was psychotic. There? He was yeah. a sicky. Yeah. When you looked in, when you looked in your eyes, it's yeah. like I even watched it again today. I watched it again. I said, "This man is dead serious." He's w- yeah, he's yeah. way up in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, you know, something as an actor, which is cool too. I mean, uh, you can. I, I like hiding behind masks. Okay. And even if the mask is as small as some contact lenses. And if you notice with that guy, I specifically chose the eyes of a serpent. So it was more light brownish type of thing. Yeah, it looks like a snake's eyes, yeah. Yeah. So it also brought home how I'm feeling, (laughs) you know. (laughs) Everything about him, I made him animal, Mm -hmm. very dogmatic. Uh, uh, His habit was biting ears. Yes. I remember that too. Yeah, it was never in a script that I'm in a bar and I uh, a guy turns around and I'm biting his ear off. That's yeah. not normal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But it adds this thing, you know, he, he just saunters out of the dark. And he comes up against the guy, ah, crunches mm-hmm. down and mm-hmm. crazy, you know. So, Are you macabre? Yeah, so it brought that sort of uh, almost macabre kind of quality to it. And mm-hmm. the music... Mm-hmm. Wally Badaru, man, I tell you, that man, is mm-hmm. his work is beautiful. So the music added that sort of uh, mystery, and mm-hmm. here it comes. Yeah, here comes a grim reaper. Yeah, it's yeah. Great. Oh, it's yeah. So, and as you said, it's a lot, it's very shadowy. You're yes. always coming out of the shadow. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you know. Yeah. He says, one more shadow. Cartoons are Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, and the funny thing with it, I didn't realize that movie came out since 1997. Forever ago. Yeah, and that was like, what, 22 years ago. And it's like you didn't realize, like, holy smokes, it's so long. But you still get that exact same feeling watching it today as you got 22 years ago when it first came out. Yeah. That is the wonderful thing about them films. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I hear it all the time. People say, man, it's fresh. Yeah. It's fresh. Mm Mm-hmm. I go, all right. And it is true because I have a um, new generation. I, I see kids now saying, yo, Max, yeah. Max. <laughs> and that was shot 20 yeah. years ago. Crazy. Now this is, okay, you know what? We went there, so let's get there. <laughs> One of my favorite movies, we watched this movie, I swear, probably 10 times a day. Mm-hmm. I don't know how we found so much time, but 10 times a day. We're talking about shot us. Yeah. And that movie there, when you really think about it that was probably your least speaking that you've done in a movie that was my i i, I thought as the actor mm-hmm. i'd give myself the challenge of not saying much but yeah. bring over 
the intensity that you'd never forget this guy. Didn't say a word. Max but Donnie. If, yeah, mm -hmm. he was just in your face. His gaze were distant. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and he was loyal to the mm -hmm. bone, mm -hmm. you know. So these were all the traits that gangster <laughs> so you added that and a little bit of psychotic, you know. You see that close up of him smoking that cig, and when you pull back, it's somebody. It's yeah, <laughs> that yeah. Point, that, point. that yeah. point sticks out in my mind the most yeah. is when you smoke and then you just how you just chuck the arm in in yeah. the garbage. It's like and just it's like you're, looks you're sick of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you write thirty three, and then you come back and put the one in blood. Yeah. And that, that laugh is yeah. what was so evil, and you yeah. felt that in your core. <laughs> yeah. 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 And ran away. Yeah. I yeah. mean, when he cut that man's neck, oh. everybody in the theater was quiet. Nobody spoke. And I, I'm always very... Uh, <laughs> I'm always very tickled by it uh, yeah. <clears throat> whenever I, I watch it. Yeah. That scene when they walk away and Max steps out, everybody becomes quiet and yeah. nobody says another word until the scene is done. Yes, it's so, cause it's that crazy. So I guess you would say that's your favorite part of Shatas? No, no, yeah. not at all. What's your not favorite scene in Shatas? I don't have a favorite. I, I think it was all beautifully woven together, you know. I mean, the kids mm -hmm. with that drink struck in yes. the beginning. Yes. I mean, there you go again, wanting mm -hmm. to elevate themselves, whatever way they knew how. I mm -hmm. mean, you know. Monsieur, Monsieur Gondon, a Rasta Neval Yard, yes. you know. <laughs> you know, so it moved from there to there, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes if we only could channel all that wonderful energy into some positivity, yeah. it would be so wonderful, it's wouldn't it? It's so crazy. And how Amen. did that movie all come together in the first place? Wow, that's another story. Which I yeah. think uh, mm -hmm. it's going to come to light one of these yeah. days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. That's, that's crazy because, as I said, that it became a cult classic off a of bootleg. Yes. Before it even came out, because it was years later the official one came out. Oh, man, I, it, why I th thought it was such a phenomenon is that it hit the streets. It was on the streets for five years. Yes. And then Sony picked it up, mm -hmm. dusted it up, <laughs> put a new soundtrack on it yes. from the Marley Brothers. Mm-hmm. And put it into Best Buy and Target all of the major departments stood and you could never get a copy. Mm -hmm. You're right. You know what I mean? You're 1,000%. It's like it lived two times. For the fact that Sony would pick up a movie that's been on bootleg for five years and they're going to pick it up and it still does so amazing, that's crazy right there. No, what, 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 is, what is happening is that the streets speak. And if you are Sony, you're mm -hmm. going to be attached to the streets. Mm -hmm. You've got to know what's going on because the man who drives the Bugatti in the air-conditioned mahogany room doesn't know anything about the streets. Oh. Ask him about Mulholland Drive. Uh, he knows. Yeah. But nothing about y'all, dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he knows nothing about that. That's that, right. oh, boy, that's lit, dog. Yeah. You know, he knows nothing about that. So... You have folks that he hired to mm -hmm. go out there and say, hey, man, this is what's the hardest thing. Yeah. So it's been there for five years, mm -hmm. and the numbers are steady. Uh, every household that you go into, they got a copy of Shutters. It was crazy. I remember uh, when I first learned that it was... Um, Pilford. <laughs> it, uh, I have a friend of mine who lives in London. Okay. And I'm calling up him say. Yeah, Paul, do you know what I'm just watching? Uh, I said, no, Anton, what are you watching? She says, your latest movie, mate. Fucking hell. <laughs> Go. God blind me, mate. Yeah. This is fucking hot. And I'm like, and he's describing stuff, and I'm like, no, man. No, man. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, yes. yeah, so gone. So, yeah, but uh, that's so, you know, heart wrenching, you know, all the effort put into it and it goes. 
Do you think it was a blessing or a curse or a combination of both? Ah, uh, from if you know the story from my perspective, uh, I just think it was um, just a curse. Yeah, it was a curse that it was pilfered. Um, I think if it was handled properly, like yeah. it should be, yeah, um, there would have been a um, shot at thirty, shot of fifty, yeah, shot of a hundred, mm -hmm. shot of one, two, three, four, five. You know, uh, and this could go on and on. New actors coming in. Mad Max have a son, a bastard yeah. son. <laughs> he now was in prison. Now he's out. Yeah. You know? yeah. uh, that kind of vibe, mm -hmm. you know. But. There was no management, you know, yeah. and that's what uh, some of my folks failed to have, that truly, mm -hmm. you know. It, it, when you make a film, mm -hmm. it, it's an effort by many people, my brother. Have you ever sat there after the movie Holy done and smokes. watched the credits yeah. and see all the names going up? Mm -hmm. Even the guy who run for the coffee and go get the lunch, yeah. His name is in His there. name is in there, but it's an effort by all of these folks. And when all these folks come together and get this done, mm -hmm. and uh, it's there on the, getting in the machine or whatever, and press record, it's run off in something else, and it's on the street in yeah. 10 minutes. And all of this goes down the drain. I mean, yeah, there are other folks making money, but people who never sweat a day in their lives in regards to this project. Yeah. You know, so it's grossly unfair, man, but that's a way of the uh, new world. I think at that time there, it was just the cross, the internet was just really bubbling at that time. Mm -hmm. DVDs were just bubbling. We weren't into streaming like how we are right now. No, yeah. So it's almost like it was a couple years too early to really reap the benefits of what's going on right now. Yeah. If it had yeah. came out right now today, it would be a different ball game right now. Listen, man, it would, uh, well, it's small screens that rule now. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody's interested in it. I mean, you, yeah, you go to the home and you see that, but mm -hmm. I mean, most of the hours of the day, it's the phone, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so, yes, it would. So I think they're also considering um, doing a part two. Okay. Mm. I know that at one point there was actually supposed to be a series well, yes, there is. In fact, if you go to uh, YouTube and um, put top, well, just called Top Shutters yeah. TV series. Okay. Yeah, we shot, through, uh, well, two episodes that I know of and uh, okay. it stopped. Yeah. Any reason in particular? <laughs> yes, yeah. but uh, and I'm not uh, able to divulge at okay. this time, you know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it stopped and uh, I was hoping that, it would, but it's been a couple of years now since mm -hmm. that stopped. Um uh, what it was, in fact, was a prequel, is that what they call it? Yeah. yeah and not necessarily like the movie. Mm -hmm. So, Shot of the Movie has been in court as well for many years. Yeah, man, it's all of that excitement. Okay. But um, but I think uh, all, all the kinks are probably ironed out yeah. and now, and uh, they're looking forward to um, resurrecting the part two because... Shutters has become iconic, has been it, iconic for, you know, I mean, generations yeah, yes. of yeah, people, yeah. yeah. I, like I said, kids are talking about, yo, Marx, Marx down there. Right. Oh, my God, these kids, you know, yeah. 20 years ago, they're 18, they're 17, they're 15, they're 12, you know. That's so, so yeah. crazy. Why do you think when it comes to the gangster roles, mm -hmm. you're casted and then you're so believable in those roles there? Oh, and, me? Yeah, and you're not that person on an everyday basis. Oh, that's great. Then it tells, are you trying to tell me I'm a great actor? Right. Thank you. <laughs> what a way to say it, eh? <laughs> All right, but um, no, I like um, I, I like the surprise. Yeah, you know, um, I, I like the the mask, uh, you know, done in the mask. Mm -hmm. And then being Paul afterwards, yeah. you know, uh, just regular Paul, because I paint as well. So that helps me not to wallow in that other art, but move on to this other thing, the yeah. colors, the composition, all of that kind of thing. You know, so I think that helps. But um, um, it's just work. It's just for me, it's job, you know, and any job that I get, um, 
if it's the lunatic, mm-hmm. I go barefooted, I burn the soles of my feet, and I mean, three months later, I couldn't mm-hmm. wear shoes. Yeah, it took some time before I could wear shoes again, but yeah. it was worth it. Yeah. Because then many years after, kids who will see me doing this will go, I can do that. You lost you know, yourself in the character. Yeah, man, and I see now there is a revolution somewhat in Jamaican films that are being made mm-hmm. where I see lots of guys doing different characters, you know, and they're being, I said, yeah, you know, no more of the, you know. Just a one, two, three dance characters. Crap, yes. You know, and, and getting onto it in mm-hmm. a very serious way. So I, I'm very happy about that, if yeah. for nothing else. yeah. Wow. What's one of the hardest roles you had to play to date? What? One of the hardest roles you've had to play to date. Something that really challenged you to go deep inside of you to oh, the bring lunatic. this character. The, the lunatic, lunatic yeah. was the hardest. The lunatic. I shot a film, The well, it's not out yet. It's called Storm Cell, where I play this guy from Alabama. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, the Alabama ads, <laughs> I mean, yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, so... I do that, and uh, I thought I, I, I kind of, but I think the lunatic might, because of the preparation of the lunatic, yeah. I spent a couple of months in the wild, mm-hmm. you know, um, and had to deprogram. Yeah, so, That's what yeah. I want to know. How do you, after you, you're up there, how do you come down? Now, what is it, how do you reverse everything that you did I, I i try to not reverse but i try to go to places where um like to a hotel two mm-hmm. weeks okay all inclusive mm-hmm. and a little cabana yeah kick back with a canvas yeah you know nice bakla wine okay yeah i mean i'm peeing and listen to prokofiev or listen to some buica listen to some fiat slav richter okay yeah and that's what brings you back to yeah, it levels brings you back off. to Paul. Yeah, you know Paul, the artist. Where you hear the bird, you have to tweet and him open the window just to see what color bird it is. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you absorb life in a totally different way than most people do, because as you said, the bird, the painting, the acting, the do you sing? Yes, I, I can, can carry. You know. <laughs> I, I can. I, I could tell because you have that voice. Old school dictated, though you know, because mm-hmm. you had to be musically inclined. Because mm-hmm. there were musicals mm-hmm. that you had to be a part of, you yeah. know. And if you're acting, you can't sing. My God, you'll never get anywhere. Yeah. You've got to be a triple threat, triple threat. You got to dance. You got to mm-hmm. sing, and you got to act. act. That, that three would get so you to the door. So that's old school. Yeah, that's old school ethics, you know. Mm-hmm. So that was a part of it. Yeah. Wow, you brought up thing there. You brought up painting because mm-hmm. I know that you've been doing that now for wow, thirty plus years now. Yes, sir. So what actually got you into painting, and what kind of painting do you like to paint? I'm a surrealist now, but at the time when I what got me into painting, I just wanted a distraction. Like I told you, my early life was in a very depressed state, mm-hmm. and I painted on the zinc and the wall and the like. Have you ever heard of this um, artist by the name of Jean-Michel Basquiat? Mm-hmm. Haitian artist who used to paint on the trains in New York City. They call him Samo. Or That's Samo. one of the original graffiti artists type of Yes, thing? yes. yes. Him, yes. same one. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, uh, at the time he painted, it was to alleviate many demons. Mm-hmm. And um, because of where I lived, I was doing the same thing, you know. So okay. I, and the only difference is all my paintings were green. Okay. I had no money, so yeah. I had to uh, squeeze the leaves, dry them, and make paint from the leaves. That's how you came up with painting in the first place. Yeah. Okay, so then my first thing is, why would you even think that you could do that, to create paint? I've always liked that as a kid coming up, man. Uh, yeah. Even with plasticine, you know? Yes, uh, yes, yeah, plasticine. Yeah, 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 you know? So, and I think it's also one of the ways of, you hear people talking about venting mm-hmm. or getting something out. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, because I would prefer to paint the picture that's bothering me in my mind. Yeah. Somehow I feel I've transported it onto the canvas. You've gotten it yes, out of you, there put you, it there so yeah. that now it's gone. Yeah, it mm-hmm. over there, so I'm yeah. me over here. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's really what it is. So then right now, what kind of um, pieces are you putting out? And do you actually display them? What do you do with your pieces? I um I paint big canvases like 36 by 40 and all of that. Uh, when I came here the other day, uh, they were used in a um, Housewife of Atlanta okay. episode. Yeah, uh, I'm quite prolific when it gets to the uh, painting. I've um, I've exhibited in London, um, Geneva, Lucerne, Lugano. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, back this way, in New York. Yeah, but um, <clears throat> I um. I I did the HOA uh, episode, and then the other day there was, I think last weekend, um, um, uh, Vosetta Frempong had uh, a charity autism, okay. charity cancer tournament, golf tournament, and uh, once again I pitched in because it's a great cause. You know, I uh, painted a real nice piece mm-hmm. that I added, donated to their auction table, which went very well. Mm-hmm. You know, so... I'm also really trying to make the folks know that I also do this, and I've been yeah. doing it much right. longer exactly. than I've been acting, you okay, know. It's a bit, but okay, nobody you know knows what? this if side. You're right. Now that if you do the numbers, mm-hmm. painting, yeah, if it's 30-odd, because you yeah. haven't been, you've been acting now for about 30, 25 to 30 right now. Yeah, thereabouts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, man, I, 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 I went to Kingston College. Uh, mm-hmm. my, I, my formal training, Casey mm-hmm. uh, Alexander Cooper, Okay. Uh, was my uh, art teacher at the time. Okay. Yeah, man. So that was uh, any formal training came about. That's where it all started, you know. So and it blossomed from there because then I found friendships with very uh, prolific artists who who were in the business. I also went into the business of getting a job at the National Gallery of Jamaica so I could be around the art, so I could be, yes, man, you have to. <laughs> yeah. no, so you have to, you know, and as an extension, you started learning about Francis Baker and mm-hmm. de Kooning and all of the other world artists. Mm-hmm. You know, it was an opportunity also to be able to teach mm-hmm. or, uh, well, I used to be a guide, and yes, welcome. Yes, I use my early every, jobs. Every time we, every three minutes, mm-hmm. you start to tell me about a different job you had. Oh, I was yeah. this. I'm, no, but yeah. if you're an actor, let me let me let me make this real clear. Okay. If you're an actor, mm-hmm. you're gonna have ten million different jobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. From the rock. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of rough. You got to juggle. But if your passion, stay with it, persevere. You know, and that's what I had to do. Just like that. Wow. Yeah, man. Is there any roles that you don't like to do or won't do or you just stay away from? Um, no, I am um, the nerd, the the bad guy, the 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 geek. No, I'm uh, no, I'm an actor. I'm an actor, you know. I get it. Metamorphosize, uh, where's that is that check? Oh, all right, and thanks. Yeah. And I'm out, you know yeah. me, yeah, but it's a job. Yeah. That's all it is. And that's what you recognize it is. And then, again, from the role is right, mm-hmm. and you figure you could do it justice, you mm-hmm. will take it. Of course. I want to always bring something mm-hmm. fresh, you yeah. know. Um, I, I, I never wanted to be the regular bad man. Yeah. You know, this guy had to bite ears. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there had to be something about him. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then... I get another script and they say, bad man again. And I go, all right, damn. How do all I? Right, this guy doesn't speak. Yeah. You know, he's way out there. But when he, yeah. So when that scene, pivotal scene of cutting that guy's head, mm. most of the camera yeah. is on my face. Yes. And not necessarily on the the well, event. You know what? <laughs> now that you're saying it, yeah, you're 100% man. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And it's almost like you could see your, it, it makes it so you like have to tell the story. Stuff. Yeah. And in telling the story, but that's where the art comes in, my yeah. friend. You know. Professional storyteller. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. the face, you know, I say a word, you yeah. know. I mean, for me, I experienced 10 million emotions after the cut. Yeah. I came, I ejaculated. Yeah. You know, I felt afraid. 
I'm now happy. Mm-hmm. And whilst I'm happy, what is that sour taste in my mouth? Yeah, yeah, you know, and you're doing this for all flowing, you know, yeah. so your facial expressions change. It's so yeah. crazy. Do you ever look back at your work and say, holy smokes, how did I even do this? How did I get so in-depth in this character? No, man. Uh, my, my thing is before I even go, I recognize it's not even me. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like my paintings, mm-hmm. I'm the vessel that whatever I dream up, mm-hmm. wherever that dream comes from, mm-hmm. That's the entity in charge. You understand? 100%. So, okay. Yeah. So, I never really, it's not a blatant taking credit of anything. I'm sometimes, I'm amazed. I get it. And appreciative. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, I, I just go into each of them and I say, man, I want to make this one memorable. Mm-hmm. You know, how could we do this? And you just empty the vessel and it just goes. Yeah. Yeah, I under I understand because being a creative person, because I'm semi creative myself. Okay, it's like after you look back at your work or whatever, or even when you say, "Okay, I know I'm at A and I want to get to Z, but I don't know the steps between B and X." Mm-hmm. You just go, and by the time you look back, it's like, "Holy smokes, mm-hmm. I'm not even a hundred percent sure." how I got here. No, but when I tell my students uh, in, uh, in teaching, uh, I say that there's, there's a truth. Mm-hmm. That is the biggest thing in the business of telling lies. Yeah. The truth, the <laughs> conviction. You know yeah. what? Say that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> the truth yeah. is the biggest bit thing of in the business of telling lies. Because, because I guess, okay, conviction. so then what you're saying to me is you're... I've got to be, I've got to believe you that mm-hmm. you're this poor guy who you say you are on film. Yeah. Or you're this real bad guy. Yeah. That's that truth that yeah. you must bring. Mm-hmm. You know, Even but, though it's a lie, but that's a truth that you have to bring out. That's yeah, a, to convince me, the onlooker. Yeah. Yeah. So for the conviction, yeah. that's the truth. That's called the actor's truth. Got you. And now in getting to the actor's truth, you have different... Um, I break it down, mm-hmm. you know, like I say, you have to create backstories yes. that you, the actor, must believe. Mm-hmm. I won't tell you all of them. I mean, <clears throat> you won't come to my class. But uh, <laughs> but one uh, definitely states you, you have to create backstories that you yourself believe. Yeah. You know, that is uh, that is just another one of the stones that will take you to that place where I tell you where I can go sometimes. Yeah. I'm working in front of the camera and I can walk out. It might sound crazy. I can step out of the body and turn back and look at myself and say, all right, I'm going to bite down upon the jawbone and mm-hmm. turn my eyes to the left mm-hmm. before I slowly look up at the woman. Yeah. I look up at the guy I'm about to kill, mm-hmm. you know, and he does that. He bites his jawbone and looks down and slowly looks up. I'm scared right yeah, now. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. But it, it, it's how yeah. you, you, after many years of doing the art, mm-hmm. you, you you can almost in not real time yeah. plan yeah. what you're going to do because you I can also it. So see it before it even happens. You know, so it's when you practice. It's yeah. like the manga guy that he keeps build, lifting the weight. All of a sudden yeah. he becomes bulky. Yeah. But practice, and, and that goes with everything. Mm-hmm. So when you're given a role or a script, do you improvise also? Do you have enough room to improvise, to, as you said, to bring him to life? Or you like to generally stick to what's on the paper? I never think about improvising. Okay. No, uh, that I, I, I don't want to diss my writer. I never do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, mag- I wait for magic to happen. It's a, it, it just might be a thing... Um, you know, we get to a point where I'm supposed to come around the corner with the gun outstretched like that. Mm-hmm. But where we're shooting it, there is no corner. Yeah. So instead of doing that, I feel like, you know what I, I best do, guy? Mm-hmm. Let's put some uh, oil on the floor so I can slide, come around, start, ah. bum, 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 and shoot him from <laughs> below. Got you. That's Got why, you. Yeah. yeah. So we improvise there and then. Magic happens. Got you. So it's not like you're imposing your will onto the script. It's just... As you go into the script, mm-hmm. whatever is supposed to happen mm-hmm. will happen, and that's the way it is. Yes, man. And and I always think about, I never even worry about lines. Mm-hmm. 
uh, I worry about uh, situation. Mm -hmm. You know, um, going back to uh, dance hall queen when he walks into the square where they're playing dominoes. Yes, yes. Uh, that situation. Mm -hmm. To me, I'm thinking as the actor, the minute I get up in there, I'm going to control everything. Okay. When I go into his ear, I'm going to be the Grim Reaper. Are you my comfort? You, you can, know, you can so, feel that in your soul man, when you say it. And this is yeah. what I said. So yeah. that's another little bit of magic because then I say to the cameraman, hey, do me real nice ECU, yeah. extreme close up. Yeah. Up in his face so I can use my eyes tell in the, the story. dark. Yeah. And slink away in the dark again. Yeah. What? It's the little nuances. Besides the words that's coming out of your mouth, yes, that man. brings everything full Together. circle. Yeah, this is what I said to you earlier, details, mm -hmm. details. You're yeah. all about the details. All about, because I paint. Yeah. I paint, so that helps, you know. It's mm -hmm. all the details that bring uh, together any... Um, any piece. This is something I painted years ago. Uh, wow. Just a, that's just a, a small part of it, yeah. you know, but uh, my stuff is like, yeah. you know. But. And do you actually have any of your art in your home? Do you hang your own art or you rather just paint and then give it away or sell it or do something with it? No, I, um, I've i been a part of, the, there's a very big art event called Art Basel okay. in uh, Miami, Florida yearly. Yeah. That I've, I've been to a couple of years, well, three, four years, you know, so I do that. If not that, I have um, exhibitions of my own. Okay. Or um, what I want to do here in Toronto as well is to um, have a paint and sip because that's very, yeah, where I invite people to come see me, uh, 30 people, we mm -hmm. get canvases. We paint, we talk about who's the authority or not, certainly yeah. not so-and-so. I yeah. mean, we sip drinks, and that's when the paintings become even more interesting. Okay. You know, and it's always such fun because mm -hmm. people who never, you, you know, because people these days, they don't really talk to each other. It's all about the phone. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know, so it's always great for couples to when they come together, you know, they're not on the phone now, mm -hmm. you know, they're helping each other paint, yeah, paint your nose, baby, yeah. <laughs> you know, depending yeah. on how much liquor they've consumed. It so it makes sense. And yeah. what's even great about that too is to see if, as you said, if there's 30 people in the room, mm -hmm. to see how they brought this paint into life. Because everybody's painting the same thing, you know, but it's how Different, you brought it to uh, life. Yeah. You know yeah, I mean? but it's always fun. I do that in Miami. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm I, I'm thinking I'm talking with my representatives to uh, get something going here in Toronto. Definitely mm -hmm. because you even answered the question I was going to ask you: Is what are you doing in Toronto right now? Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. And that's definitely one of the things. I'm also shopping a script. Okay. Um, so you're a writer also. To, yes. Well, I'm you're definitely. Full, listen, man, you got to put the hats artist. on. Yeah. You know, I, I also have a, a team uh, of people who write. So okay. I'm trying to shop a script uh, called Initiation, and okay. it's, yeah, it's very, you know, urban, Yeah, you know, of course, gory, mm -hmm. uh, very gory, and um, I'm looking for investment, so mm -hmm. I'm also doing that whilst I'm here in Toronto. Okay. What are some of your favorite type of movies to watch off the air? If you're just going to go home, relax, pop something in the DVR, watch Netflix, what type of stuff do you like to watch? SpongeBob. Yeah, what? yeah. Never thought I would hear that come out of your mouth. I know, I yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. I know. But I like SpongeBob, um, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Krabs, um, yeah. yeah, Squidward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like them That's all. how I know yeah. you're not just playing. You yeah. really know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, mm -hmm. Patrick, that lazy yeah. mother. Anyway, <laughs> but, uh, no, that's because I have kids, man. Yeah. So I you have all to be of what the they're cartoons. Into. Yeah, I'm into what they're into. Not only that, but if you if I really like you answering your question, would I go home and do something like that? Hey, yeah. why not SpongeBob? I certainly don't want to see what's going on in uh, the world now in the news format. Yeah. And who's being mauled and all of that kind of thing, you know. Yeah. I wow. prefer to go around the back and look at the birds again, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, before I get you out of here, I have a round called the Rapid Facts, where I ask you some quick questions. Mm -hmm. You just give me some quick, simple answers. 
<laughs> somehow, somehow that don't sound so simple. <laughs> trust me, it, it trust me, it is okay. Mm-hmm. What's the wallpaper on your phone? Uh, one of my paintings. Okay, you see, not too bad. Mm-hmm. What was the last thing you Googled? Uh, an address. An address, okay. Yeah. Um, fast food or home cooking? Home cooking. All no right. fart food for me. Okay. Yeah. What did you call it? Fart food. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. Okay. Are you a cooker or a cleaner? A, a cooker or a cleaner? Yeah. Do you prefer to cook or do you prefer to clean? No, I do both. Yeah. By the time dinner done, everything's clean. I like you that. You understand. You get it. Yeah. Okay. When it comes to reggae music, do you prefer dance hall or lover's rock? No, I'm definitely a lover of rock kind of original reggae music, Studio One. Yeah, I'm an old school yeah. guy. I'm Altanelis, yeah, and I'm a John Holt, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, favorite song of all time? Buika, Mea Culpa. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen to that. I heard her her name is B U I K A. Yeah. Listen to that woman sing. Okay. Yeah, I don't understand a word what she says. Yeah. But Energy. listen to her sing. Yeah. When she has a show mm-hmm. anywhere in the world, once the minute it's announced, mm-hmm. twenty four hours later it's sold out. Okay. And where's she from? Yeah. B U I K A Buica. Where's she from? Uh, from some uh, Spanish-speaking uh, country. I'm not quite sure, but I'm just totally in love with that woman. So okay. See, yes, man. Okay. That's never never really heard, but now I'll... Yeah. Okay. What is your hobby? Hobby? Uh, oh, do I have a hobby? I, <laughs> no, I, I paint. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that's not a hobby because I get so carried away that that's not considered a hobby mm-hmm. and the subjects that I paint n- yeah. not a hobby at all <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know what else do I like doing in passing the time that's yeah. what you mean by hobby right mm-hmm. I don't know I, 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 I'm always doing stuff you know yeah. painting or writing or um, trying to come up with some prototype of some kind, you know. The art, the artistic, creative person in you is yeah. always like that. Yeah, it keeps you busy. Uh, yeah, something has to be done, you know. I like that. All right. Last place you've been on vacation, not work, strictly vacation. Oh, uh, last place I've been on vacation. Oh, it wasn't working, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, to go while. see the Space Needle. No, no, not really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, if you could call her that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. See the space needle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thought you said uh, no work, vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Okay. Favorite between curry goat and oxtail. Uh, God. Depends on if you cook the goat good, you know, you have to cook the goat good because yeah. some people can't cook the goat, mm-hmm. but uh, mm-hmm. oh gosh, that kind of tight, but stupies will beat them both. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. stupies right. will beat them both. I hear you. I got you. I, I could understand that one there. Are you an early bird or a late night owl? Ah, oh, they both usually run into one with me because I'm up late if three four o'clock in the morning painting and then yeah. i hear the kids like the bus mm-hmm. I'm like oh my god it's eight o'clock oh, yeah. <laughs> get some sleep <laughs> you know so it's mm-hmm. yeah one running no, into the other okay one word or phrase you say too much uh my girl is gonna laugh <laughs> Your mother is a man. (laughs) (laughs) What? What? That's exclaiming. You know, if I hit the foot, I said, Your mother is a man. (laughs) (laughs) He's gonna say, you know. Yeah. He said, I'm trying not to do the bad word thing, you know, the profanity, but uh, I try. Yeah. 
that yeah, I say I, your mother is a man because yeah. I yeah, I think that's yeah. It hits home. Mm-hmm. You get the point. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you understand. Mm-hmm. Last book you read. Last book I read. Um gosh, I can't remember. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. Oh, um God, I read The Lunatic about two years ago. Yeah. You actually read the book? Yeah. 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 And how was that? Actually? I never I never I never wanted the uh my reading the book to influence my interpretation of the character. Got you. Got you. So yeah, man, I only read that book two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Man, that's the last time I read a book. All right. When it comes to social media, what is your favorite platform and why? My favorite platform is uh, Instagram. Okay. Yeah, because I think more can be said on Instagram in shorter space of time and reach yeah. more folks. So, makes sense. Uh, yeah. That's the end of the rapid facts. You see how easy that was? It wasn't too crazy. It wasn't too crazy. Now we're at the end. Right now, the floor is yours. Anything you want to say, you want to big up, anything, leave some contact. The floor is yours right now. I just wanted to talk about the uh, the folks here in um, Toronto. Okay. You know, black folks in Toronto. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I, 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 it, it kind of bugs me out when because where I'm from, it's not as when I see the Indian, the Chinese, black man, everybody together, sit down down the place and getting it together. Yeah. I thought, nice. Mm-hmm. Or when I go to the barber shop and I see, is, you know, hey, nice. All right. Yeah. Now, What's going on theatrically for the local folks, Mm -hmm. programs in that, you know, I'd like to lend a hand. I have an initiative called Shoot With A Camera, Not With A Gun. And um, what I've uh, been given citations, uh, yeah, man, by the mayor of New York City for Mount Vernon High School. And Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I lend that part of me to the, the communities. I'd like to do that here. I'm pretty you sure know, right I'm, now. I'm more, more interested in the um, depressed areas, mm-hmm. you know, um, schools in that. Um, and what it is, is I go in the school three days. Uh, first day I'm introduced to the students. We talk about life. We talk about stories. Maybe mm-hmm. where you're living, mm-hmm. you know, the man next door. Why has he always been such a pig? You mm-hmm. know, whatever. We talk about that. All right. We come with an idea of writing the story. I go back to the hotel that night, I write that story. Okay. We come back the next day, I pair a couple of our students with a cameraman, five students go with a sound man. Okay. And then I have another 12 people who are going to be a part of the cast. You know, and so we use that day mm-hmm. in and around the school to shoot that story. In three days? Yeah. The second day, that's the second day yeah. shot. Now the third day, the night, the second day, the night of the second day shot, it's taken to the editor. Mm-hmm. And then the editor is hard at work. So by six o'clock the next day, yeah. 6 p.m., when everyone is in the auditorium and sitting down and the screen starts and they see what they have done mm-hmm. and they see themselves starring in it. Their looks, it's just worth it, man. Yeah. It it's brings out something different. Yes, yes. Out of them. Yes, and it's not only that, but what it is is that understanding how you can tell your own stories. Especially in today's society with where you can do this on a phone. Yes, man. Yes, man. Yes, it's a very important thing to do. Yeah. If when you tell your own stories, no, you you don't have to leave it to somebody else to tell. Speak on your behalf, right? Yeah, yeah. makes so sense. So I go in there and I, but, but I, I just if it sticks to one student, it's worth it. You've done your job, you know. So I, I do that, and uh, that's one of my way of giving back. Yeah, man, that's pretty smart. Yeah. Any contact info if they could see your art, your Instagram, something where they, they could I mean, you could always, if you are interested in any uh, of my art, I'm at Real Paul, R E A L Paul Campbell uh, IG, and uh, there is the uh, Paul Campbell J A yeah. IG, you know, or you can contact me at Paul Campbell Management at Gmail. 
mm-hmm. you know. So if you're interested in seeing the art, uh, well, any of those are platforms you'll be able to see the art, you know. But if you're interested in speaking in regards to the the uh, TV show I spoke of, uh, mm-hmm. you know, you could always get in touch via uh, my management. Big, big, big. One last question I want to ask you before you get out of here. When it comes to stage, theater, stage. <laughs> okay. Stage. Stage affords you. All right, finish your question. No, no, no. Which you, do I prefer? Yes. Yes, the stage. Um, yeah. Stage because um, it affords you the, um, the adrenaline rush. Instant. Yeah, you know, when you're doing film, you can do 100 takes. Paul, that was not good at all. Let's do this again. God almighty. Uh, Listen, get him some coffee, (laughs) right? (laughs) Yeah. So, but when you're on stage, I mean, once that play starts, Mm -hmm. you're going right through until it ends. Yeah. There's no, ah, stop. Let's do this again. No. So it's, um, and I try not to be very, what I'm saying, Jamaica, lackadaisical when it comes to uh, the film either. Okay. Uh, with the 10 takes and 100 takes, I'm not into that. Yeah. You know, I try to now. get it, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe uh, a couple of times, yeah, for different angles. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But that's it, man. Stage. I try to because I, uh, especially when it's a, you get dif- different takes. Um, usually you do a master shot. Mm-hmm. From wherever, get, however many people are in it, and then you come closer. Got you it. know, um, take my perspective, looking at you, and then yours, looking at me. Whatever the case and you is, chop it up, and put yeah. it together to uh, look like one. Uh, yeah. So when I go there, especially when they say, "Okay, now, Paul, it's gonna be close up," I go, "Okay." Yeah. <laughs> now I know I've got to bring the tears up and the thing tighten yeah. and the teeth and yeah. Yeah. So. The yeah. technical you, the technical way you explained what you do mm-hmm. is so crazy. How you broke it down because we see it, but mm-hmm. again, you don't know how you got there until you actually broke it down just now. Say, okay, this is what I'm going to do here. This is what mm-hmm. you're a real master at what you do, man. Mm-hmm. I, I I I I try to teach it, yeah. so I have to find ways to. Go back and say, okay, how did I get to this place? Got you. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, that's right. Uh, yeah. So, mm-hmm. I, because I have to pass it on, you yeah. know. Yeah. It's not just in your head no more. No. It's now I gotta express no. to somebody oh. the technique that I used yeah. to get here. Uh, Stanislavski's got his technique. Why Paul Campbell yeah. has his <laughs> technique? You <laughs> just know, that simple. So. Mr. Paul. Man, peace and love, my brother. Thank you so much. It's You're been welcome an amazing so much. conversation. Much you know love, what I mean? Much love. Thank you so very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Muscle, and this has been another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast, and we are out. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichut.com.